Hey, welcome back. Let's dive right into today's video. One of you asked me this question on LinkedIn, so I thought I would discuss it through a video. We are given the following circuit and are asked to compute the input impedance from the node X as indicated. It might be tempting to say that the input impedance looking into the source of M2 is 1 by GM2. Well, that's not quite true. This circuit can be easily analyzed by drawing the small signal model, but let's look at a neater way to analyze it. Let's digress for a bit and look at another circuit. By the way, if you like these kind of videos, then consider liking and subscribing as well. So we have M1 and M2, same as before, with a negative feedback from the source of M2 to the gate of M2. Let's assume the gain of this amplifier to be A. Let's first calculate the input impedance of this circuit. In order to do so, we will short the independent voltage source V in and we'll apply a test voltage at the node X and then we'll compute the current flowing out of the test voltage source. If we have a voltage of VT at the source of M2, the amplifier amplifies it and feeds it to the gate of M2 to generate minus A times VT at the gate. Thus, the VGS of M2 is minus A plus 1 times VT which drives it to pull a current of GM2 times A plus 1 times VT. Neglecting the GDS of M1 and M2, we can thus comment that the effective input resistance is 1 over A plus 1 times GM2. It is as if the GM of M2 is boosted by the factor of A plus 1. Coming back to the question at hand, recognize that M3 forms a common source amplifier stage with a gain of minus GM3 times RO3. Thus, Rn is simply 1 over GM2 times 1 plus GM3 RO3 and not 1 by GM2, assuming that RL is much smaller than RO2. Before we close this discussion, I would like to talk about one last thing. You might be familiar with the cascode in which we have a current source which is then buffered to increase the output impedance. This would yield an output resistance of GM2 RO2 RO1 plus RO1 plus RO2. Now if we want a higher output impedance, we can consider stacking three transistors or more. However, each transistor we stack would eat away a portion of the headroom. A smarter way might be to employ the GM boosting strategy that we just learnt about. I would encourage you to think about the output impedance and the swing limits of the GM boosted cascode that we discussed today. Next time you guys come across a new circuit, try breaking it down into smaller circuit topologies that you are already familiar with like the common source, common gate, common drain etc. And even more importantly, try to identify if there is any feedback in the circuit. If you enjoyed this video, I'd recommend you check out the video titled Looking into a pair of notes. I'd attach a link of that in the description. Okay, that's it for today folks. Happy learning.